we're talking about the central problem of mankind, the problem that is stated in a certain verse that runs, the good that I would, I cannot, and the very evil that I hate is the thing that I do. And actually, as often preceded by another statement, I do not understand my own actions. Because the good that I would, I cannot, but the evil that I hate, that I do. Another person has put it differently. Dostoevsky put it this way. He said, the only reason a man will act against his own best advantage is to have his own way. In other words, a person will act against his own advantage even. He will act to actually destroy himself in a situation just in order to have his own way. And you probably are like me. You find yourself doing that at times and wondering, am I crazy? Am I insane? And you've often wondered, how on earth do I change this? And it's not only those of us who are alcoholics or who are drug addicts or who are caught up on sex, on homosexuality or lesbianism, or who are overwhelmed by a evil temper that bursts out and destroys our domestic bliss almost every week. It's not only people like us who are addicted to those things, it's all of us, all of us human beings have find ourselves often in the situation where we're not able to do what we know we should do. It's not a matter of what should we do or what is good and what is bad. All of us are pretty clear on most of those things. But our difficulty is in doing what we know we ought to do. And the problem in doing it is we find there's something in us ourselves that opposes good. There's something in us ourselves that opposes even us. We set our wills to do what we know is right, and we find there's something inside us that seems to oppose even our wills. And, of course, what we have been saying is it's our very nature. It's our whole nature. Our whole mind and emotions seem to work not from our wills, but they seem to be dominated by our bodies. And our bodies, in their turn, seem to be dominated by circumstances in the world, seem to be dominated by things, seem to be dominated by people. Often we find ourselves absolutely driven to certain actions because of what people think. Our little eyes look out and we see somebody who is disapproving of us and that sends a signal to our little emotions that want to be uh, praised and want to be liked and that sends a signal to our mind and our mind determines, boy, it's not a bright thing to say that if it's going to bring disapproval from that person and our mind utterly dominates our will and our poor little will has no say in the matter at all. So we are driven to certain actions because of what people think. It's the same with circumstances. Often we get up in the morning and it's raining, raining and the clouds are dark and the day looks miserable and we want to be happy that day. It's somebody's birthday and we want to be upbeat. But suddenly our eyes catch the sight of that gloomy morning and they send a signal to our emotions. It's a dark, dull day. Don't you feel dull and dark? And our emotions send a signal to our mind saying this is going to be a miserable day and our mind just determines well this is a sad day so let's keep a frown on our faces and let's look down and let's not make any effort to make anybody happy and the poor little will just submits it has no chance to do anything else so most of us have found that there's something in our whole personalities that opposes what we really want to do and what we have been saying is that short of being able to take your personality in and check it in for a new one or have a surgeon cut out your personality and put in a new one, there seems no answer to this. Many of us have tried, of course, to retrain our personalities and we make a little progress, but on the whole, the personality remains largely the same. And if we beat it down in one area, it seems to pop up in another. And uh, we wonder, is there any way out of this or do we have to die with this personality? and just uh, make do with uh, ameliorating the situation as best we can. What we have been saying is that you don't have to die with it, and you don't have to live with it. That the maker who made you 
knew that this would come about. He knew that this would come about. He knew that you would develop a personality like that. And he foresaw that. And he actually made arrangements to change it. He did it in a cosmic miracle. Now, uh, you may say, well, now, wait a minute. You're logical up to this time, but now you're expecting me to take a leap of faith. Yes, I, I have to do that because it is, in fact, a fact. And there are facts, you know, that are beyond our present ability to reason uh, around them. Uh, you know that it is a matter of fact that much of the, many of the stars that we see in the sky uh, no longer exist. It's just the light from them that is traveling towards us, and that's what we see. And the distances are so huge in space that the light has, ta has to take centuries and centuries to get to us. And yet it's almost impossible for our reason to grasp that, so that we look up and we say, oh, that's a star, it's really only the light that is coming to us. It isn't a star. The star has died centuries ago. But it's very hard for us to reason around that. There are things that our reason finds it very hard to grasp, and yet you believe it. You believe it uh, even though you can't reason it through. You believe it. There are many things you believe about computers. You don't know exactly how they work. You don't know every detail about them. The same with your internal combustion engine. You don't understand everything, and yet you do believe certain things. So uh, I make no apology. Uh, this is just a very important fact that is vital for you to know. Your creator knew that you would develop the personality that is so selfish and is so opposed to what you want to do and to what you know is right. And he destroyed that personality in his son, Jesus. That's what that death of Jesus Christ is all about. It's not just a matter of forgiveness of sins. It's not just a matter of God being prepared to forgive your sins if you believe that Jesus died for you. It's not just that. It's that God put you into his son, Jesus, and he destroyed that old selfish personality in his son, and he remade you completely when he raised him from the dead. And if you say to me, oh, now, come on, did that all that happen in 29 AD? No, it was expressed in 29 AD, and it was real enough in 29 AD. That's when he was crucified. But really, he was crucified from before the foundation of the world. That's what, there's a verse in the Bible that says he was slain from before the foundation of the world. And the fact is that God, the creator, exists in timeless eternity above time and space. And it's there that he remade you completely. And he has remade your personality absolutely and perfectly. And there is a beautiful personality for you that exists in timeless eternity. And if you say to me, yeah, timeless eternity, but how does it come real in my life today? Through an amazing power that God has put in the universe. It's actually a power, but he's actually a person too. He's the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is able to take that new personality of yours that exists in timeless space, and he's able to bring that into this temporal world and make it real in your life today. He's able to do that. He can do that by a miraculous transmission of that new personality out of timeless eternity and bring it into temp time and space here. He's able to do that, and if you say, well, why doesn't he do it? Because you have never believed that. And he cannot do what you will not believe him to do because he's dependent on your free will. You have to want him to do it. You have to want it, and you have to be willing for it. You have to be willing for such a new personality to come into you as Jesus himself had a personality that is willing to depend on God alone for your security and your significance and your happiness and not to depend on men or circumstances or things. And if you're willing to live that kind of life, then all you have to do is believe that the Creator has already done that for you and His Holy Spirit will make that miraculously real in your life day by day. And all you have to do is from this moment on Listen to the Holy Spirit. Believe that he's there in you as a real person and begin to listen to what he tells you to do and you'll find he'll give you the power to do it. That's how to be free. And it can be your experience today.
Let's talk a little more tomorrow about